So uh, the first portion of it is, uh, the this title is the drivers of flexibility. That is, uh, through our exploration of the fact that the forecast is always wrong, that there's uncertainty, and the observation that we need to explore what might happen, uh, there are certain factors that make uh, it much more likely that we would have, uh, should have flexibility than not. And on the other hand, there are things that act against it. There are reasons why flexibility is either not desirable or which is, or the most important thing I want to emphasize is why there are certain factors in the practice of engineering, the paradigm of engineering as we have it, that act against the idea that we should be flexible. And this is what this topic is about. That is, what are the issues that are for and against flexibility and how we might deal with them? Uh, we can come back to some of the, the implications uh, later on, but for the moment I want to address these uh, five issues. So uh, a key aspect of flexibility is to delay the design and management decisions. That is say, all right, we're prepared to do something. For example, in the garage case, we are ready to extend, uh, add extra floors if it seems appropriate, but we're not going to act on it until uh, we know what's happening. We're not going to, quote, pull the trigger, is a expression often used in practice uh, on it, until we know that it's, the circumstances are definitely right. So there are, however, a way of thinking about it, of saying, well, why mess around? We're going to need this. Why don't we build it now? Why shouldn't we just make up our minds, do it right, rather than dithering around and not knowing what we're doing? Why don't we be, take action and be a real leader, uh, leaders? So uh, this is the discussion I'd like to address. So I'm gonna call out five factors which are driving for and against the desirability of flexibility. The basic one, of course, is their uncertainty. If we didn't have uncertainty, if we absolutely knew what was gonna happen, then we should optimize for that one particular state. But the fact is we don't know what's gonna happen, not only we don't know what's gonna happen next year or the year after or the year after that and so on, but we don't know on what sequence. And next year may be good and next year after that may be bad or vice versa. And those have different implications for the profitability of the value of the system as a whole. The second one is this notion of economies of scale, which I want to go into in more detail. Uh, but it basically says, if you build it larger, it is cheaper per unit to build it. And therefore, don't mess around with small, uneconomical uh, units of capacity. Go for the big thing, save yourself money, and don't delay. The third one, which is op directly opposite to that, is the discount rate which basically says if you delay decisions, if you t build the capacity later on, you'll be doing it at a discounted rate in terms of the present so that it's cheaper to build something in the future than it is now on a present value basis. Adding to that effect is this notion of learning, that if you are doing something reasonably new that you haven't made millions of already, you're building um, a, uh, a power plant, for example, of a new design, or, and then you're going to build another one or an oil platform that when you use the same design second time, third time, fourth time, you figured out, or the team, the company has figured out ways to organize things better, maybe making some design improvements, but the cost per unit typically decrease often significantly uh, when you repeat the same design, the same module. So that makes the practice of having modules uh, as an advantage to it. And then finally, there's this notion of competitive gaining, gaming, which is quite complex, which I'm not going to go out, uh, go into detail here, but to suggest what it is. But the basic idea is that sometimes an organization or a group or an individual wants to um, scare away its competitors by saying, I'm doing it 
and I'm going to be the leader in this area. And if you try to compete with me, you'll lose. So at some point, it is a, an acceptable and desirable strategy to act first now, be number one, and uh, get the benefits of that. On the other hand, it also means you're more likely to make the mistakes. But still, that notion of uh, their strategic uh, reasons to play in the game of com competitive games to um, not delay. So these are four elements I wanted to discuss in uh, the next uh, little while. So first of all, I want to revoke the notion of uncertainty a bit. So uh, a lot of people will use uncertainty and risk as sort of equivalents, which implies since risk is saying, oh, this is a bad thing. Uh, uh, you don't talk about the risk of winning the lottery. The risk of, I mean, this is a good thing, but you talk about risk in terms of bad things. I risk failing my exam. I risk uh, um, losing my way. I w risk losing some money, whatever. Um, so I, I think that the notion of uh, se thinking of uncertainty as risk is not a good uh, mental state uh, because it leads to the idea if it's if risk is bad i'm going to try to stamp it out uh Stu myers used to use that expression uh i'm going to stamp it out it's not good we're going to eliminate it well first of all you can't eliminate it, but then secondly the uncertainty can be good that you uh, are developing a new product and maybe it'll be a winner that the uncertainty of your gain um, it can be can be exactly what you want. Um, if you're a startup, you know uh, from it, from the data that most startups fail. If you're simply going on the basis that startups fail, you should never get involved in it. If you're risk averse, never get involved in it. But the attractiveness of startups is that they may break through, and that upside uncertainty is what drives that kind of activity. So, I like to. And I encourage you to talk about uncertainties in general rather than risk and to recognize that we're talking about a range of future possibilities.